Hello and welcome to this week's Yarn Chat podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. And today I've got several finished objects to show you and only one whip. So I'm excited about that. My featured make today is the flat iron shawl from TL Yarn Crafts. Um, I made this with Coast to Coast Yarns. She did a book, what was it? Book Tropes collection last year. And I absolutely loved these colorways and it came out really cute. I think I did a few rows shorter in the shawl than is required, but I like mine a little bit smaller. Um, just because I am top heavy, I feel like too much volume here um, is can be a little bit messy for me. I also have Francesca, the mannequin back, um, and she is modeling one of my favorite sweaters that I've made. I'm trying to think of a sweater that I like more than this one, but this is the Confetti DK Pullover from Nomad Stitches. Um, I used a bunch of like clearance yarns for this one. I know that these two, like this orange and this green are both Haynes House yarns. And I know that the speckle was um, Hedgehog Fibers. The top might be another Haynes House, um, but I really like that sweater. I think I could probably still get away with wearing it pregnant because um, it's a little bit cropped if I just wore like a dress or something underneath it. Um, but yeah, I pulled that out today and it's just so pretty. I made mine like not quite three quarter sleeves. I think the sleeves hit me right at the elbow crease, but I really liked it. I would make another one. They have kids ones too. So maybe I'll make one of those for baby girl. Speaking of kids, let's talk about some finished objects. So the first one I want to show you, I almost forgot to pull out because we talked about it last week, but um, I hadn't quite finished it yet. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, that's the Cinderella pumpkin. So this was actually an idea of my husband's. You know you want to focus camera. There we go. Where he suggested that I make a blue pumpkin for baby girl's room and it could be a Cinderella pumpkin. So I thought that was really cute. I had this kind of dusty blue, which we're also using in her room. We're kind of using like ice blues and dusty blues and purples, but also like there's a lot of pink Minnie Mouse stuff in there too. So it's, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, but um, I already had this blue in my stash and then I held it with this sparkle kid silk. Um, and it came out really cute. That is from Ella Ray. Uh, I think it's just called Ella Ray. That is the name of that yarn company. But anyway, I held those two together. And then I went to Joann's and I got this little shoe charm and a little bit of bling and tied it with a black ribbon like Cinderella's choker. I thought it was adorable. Um, and I love it. So that'll go in her room. I think I'm finally done making pumpkins for uh, various friends and family. I think I've hit the end. I actually like moved the like fiber fill, polyfill stuff, and like all of the random scrap bags off of the couch because I think I am not done making pumpkins for a while. But I thought that came out really cute. I also finished this. Um, it's got a couple of ends I need to weave in. There is no pattern for this. Yeah, you can see a couple ends over here. But this is just a tri-color linen stitch blanket. Um, I'm making matching ones for me and my best friend. We are both pregnant and are both having girls. They're due two weeks apart. So um, she is getting a baby blanket like this. It has the blue, the purple, and the green with a green border. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for my little girl, except for it will have a blue border. So they'll be matching best friends blankets. I don't want to finish, cause I crocheted over all of the ends, but I'm actually going to wash it and then see how much more I need to do with weaving these ends in and tucking them in before I snip them. 
but it came out really cute. No pattern for this. I did um, a linen stitch with worsted weight yarn. It was Heartland from Lion Brand and I used a size I hook. And then for the border, I just did a single crochet all the way around. Um, and every um, top of the linen stitch, single crochet in every chain space. And then I went around and did my favorite reverse single crochet in every other stitch. So it came out really cute. Um, I'm hoping to make the one for my little girl before the shower that we have in Georgia in about a month. I think I can do this. This one actually worked up pretty quickly. Um, so that shouldn't be an issue, but I needed to for sure have hers done. So I guess this is the last thing that had to get done before the shower. And then anything else that I finish from here on on is just extra. But I wanted to be able to have pictures of both of them together, like both of the blankets together um, before the shower. So hopefully that'll still work out. Super soft. Um, Heartland yarn, really pretty colors. They have some really fun, more fall palette colors in Joann's right now. Like there's a kind of like a dark chartreuse green that I would love to play with. Um, but I have too many, excuse me, goodness. I have too many um, projects that need to be done before I indulge that. The last finished object for uh, regarding baby girl is this. And I actually just finished this. Like I did not want to podcast today until I had finished this. So this is a wreath for her room. I'm gonna try to get it to focus on some more of these flowers. There you go. And what I did is I went to Joanne and I was trying to find a very simple wreath that already had a bit of like green garland and then I could add in crocheted flowers. That was my, my thought. But when I went in there, they had a ton of gorgeous wreaths, but they were all very much like finished or they were very small. So after not quite seeing what I wanted, I instead got this gold macrame hoop, which I don't really think you'll be able to tell, um, but it's just a, a plain gold hoop. Um, nothing special or nothing crazy about that. And then I bought the white flowers with a little bit of pink in them because they had a little bit of greenery and I knew I wanted some. And then I bought floral wire and used scraps for all of the little flowers. I've made crochet wreaths before. I've never done it with a macrame hoop. And now that I have done it that way, I kind of like it um, because it's rigid and um, you can kind of, I don't know, you have a little bit more creative license if you already are going to have to buy some artificial flowers to mix in there. But I really like it. Like I said, her room has got a lot of purples and blues. So when I went into my scrap bin, that's where I tried to pull out. Um, and there's some pinks in here too, because since the middle of these had a little bit of pink, I had a little bit of this left over from a cowl. So I thought that was cute. And I really liked the way that it came out. I think it's adorable. My hands are very tired of messing with the floral wire. And I will say <laughs> the wire that I got for this project is a little bit, I'm trying to hold it up so you can see the whole thing. Um, is a little thicker than floral wire I've bought before. Um, I don't know what gauge wire this is, but it feels more like a wire coat hanger than um, than like the skinnier stems that I've gotten before. But regardless, I'm really happy with it. And it came out really cute. So this is gonna go over her crib on the wall. So not, not a mobile, but over the crib on the wall. And then we have a wooden letter, like, an initial for her first initial for her first name that is going to go in the middle and that'll go above her bed. Originally I was going to paint her name on a canvas and put it above her bed but then this idea hit me and we already had a we already had the letter in our house um 
and I already matched her nursery furniture so this kind of felt like the more practical way to go and so much of her room too like her room is very small but we also have some art that we know we want to put in there so it kind of made sense to have one less canvas and something a little different as decoration on the art or a decoration in the room so i really like the way this came out i'm just gonna put this on top of francesca for right now hopefully it won't snag on any of the yarn those are oh one more finished object this one <laughs> i finished last night so if you've been around for a while you know that i like to pattern test and sometimes i get a little bit over eager in pattern testing or <laughs> i just think that i have more time than i do or i think that i will finish things quicker than i do so this cow I've been working on, and y'all have seen it. Um, it's not a secret pattern test, but I didn't realize until like Tuesday, maybe Monday of this week, that like the pattern testers' notes and pictures and like stuff needed to be done on Friday, and I was not anywhere close to that. So I did a lot of work to finish it. It does not even like it looks so small. Why did this take so long? Well, because you're doing all of the little centers first and then you are doing a join as you go. I don't know that it would have been quicker if I had seamed it instead of doing join as you go. This is the first time I've ever done join as you go where you do most of the square and then you add it in. And I like the technique, um, the one that the designer Sass and Stitch uses for this. I really like it. In fact, I want to do a scrappy blanket where they're just solid with uh, fingering weight scraps. And I think that'll be gorgeous. But this just took so long. Um, it, well, it didn't take so long. It took longer than I thought it would. And I didn't budget my time well enough. So I was hustling to finish it. So I blocked it. I've got a couple of ends I need to um, snip now that it's blocked. But it is gorgeous. The yarn I used for this is Sunshine Queen Fiber Co. This was part of her, I can't remember if it was called Bejeweled or Jewel Tones collection that she had last year. Mine has a little bit of shimmer to it. It was a sock set where you got to pick if you wanted one or two mini skeins. And of course I chose two because you can see them both here. And I love it. It came out really well. In fact, I'll, I'll pop it on real quick. My goal is to get some finished object pictures in it today. Uh, obviously I won't be wearing it with this orange because that's not necessarily the vibe here, but it blocked out really well. Um, the pattern also says that if you wanted to make a larger circumference, like if this was too snug on your neck, um, or if you just wanted a bigger cowl, you could do that. Um, I had enough yarn left over that I probably could have done one more Row, but if you were doing this with scraps or if you were doing this and had um, more than one skein of your main color, like you could, you could make it very large and it would be gorgeous. So this right now, she's calling it the granny square cowl. I think it might change. She might change the name. So it's a little bit uh, more specific or more tied to this particular cowl. Um, but it's really cute. And I think this is going to be part of her book. I know that this is part of her book, but I think that the book comes out next year sometime from Sass and Stitch. Um, this was also the first time I had pattern tested for Caitlin and she's lovely. So I will probably try to pattern test for her again. That being said, this and what I'm about to show you are gonna be the last two pattern tests that I do this year. I have too many other projects that need to get done that I have not touched. Um, and there was a very pretty cardigan from Haley Handcrafted, who I love to pattern test for. I've pattern tested for her all the time. And I mean, it's a cardigan, so I could still do it while pregnant, but, and it's really pretty, but I can't. Not, not now, not in crunch time. But I liked this a lot. Um, it's very cute. And it's a fun way to use a sock set with too many skeins. Cause I feel like a lot of sock sets now are giving you the option 
of Too Many Skeins. So I like it a lot. And the yarn is so soft. It was soft before I blocked it and it's even softer now. So, and this will give you another, look at how pretty this is. Oh, it's delightful. And this is a fingering weight shawl and it mostly uses um, single crochet. It's very beginner friendly. I like it a lot, the flat iron shawl. Okay, one more yarn thing to show you. So if you recall, I had two pattern tests going. One was the secret pattern test and one was the cowl. Because the colors have now been released for the secret pattern test, I can tell you about it, I can show it to you, and it's good. So, this is my secret pattern test. This is in this delightful bag with all of my pins. Um, this is from Violet Loops. This um, project is due next Friday for me and I should have no trouble finishing it by then. I got a lot of work done on it over the weekend before I realized that the other cowl was due first. So um, let me start with showing you the shawl and try not to lose any stitches along the way. This is a very large shawl, which is part of the reason why it is taking so long. It is a Tunisian shawl. It's going to, call, it's going to be called the Ringing rocks shawl and it's huge so I don't know if you can see that little dip in the front is the center so all of this is finished I'm now working on this side and it is so pretty the yarn is what was secret so the yarn is from Montana crochet I have bought from her before she is a wizard with earth tones and neutrals like that is her happy place and she's very good at it. And as part of this pattern test, she was, um, she sent us yarn to do this pattern test, which I've never had happen as a pattern tester where the dyer sends you the yarn. Um, I've had it sometimes where you could get a discount with the yarn, but I've never had it um, where she sent you the yarn. And I thought that was really nice and really cool. So. I got these beautiful colors. So the lightest color, and these are all part of her fall collection, which she just announced this week, and I think drops tomorrow. I think that's right. Um, but the colors that are in this, this lightest color is called Antler. This kind of middle color is called Barley. And this deepest color is called Cider. And it's gorgeous. I love it. Um, it is a very large shawl. I'll stand up. Like, if I was wearing it, here, let me take this one off. Poor flat iron shawl. You've already been taken off twice. If I was wearing it like I was wearing that one, kind of uh, looped around the front, you can kind of see how large and yummy it is. So yeah, kind of a little bit below my waist there, <laughs> where my waist used to be. So this is um, really great, really yummy. The designer Violet Loops wanted to make sure that you could maximize a three skein shawl. And it is very large and gorgeous and yummy. It's Tunisian, it's got beautiful texture and drape. This is not blocked. And I am for sure not gonna wet block it. My gauge was a little bit, not loose per se. I will say I haven't done much Tunisian crochet on something that's this wide on fingering weight. So my gauge was a little, little looser in the middle when I had a lot of stitches on my hook, but I mean, the good thing about Tunisian is it kind of like evens itself out like knitting does. But anyway, all of that to say, I'm not going to wet block this. I will steam block it when I'm finished because I want to try to get a little bit of the, of the bottom curl to block out. But honestly, like it's not going to need much. I did wet block the little granny square cowl, but part of that was I did want to try to get a little bit more length, um, 
horizontally on that one. I don't need any more length and any direction <laughs> on this one, but it's gorgeous and I can't wait to wear it. So now that I'm finished with that cowl, this will be the last pattern test that I do this year and it's really pretty and yummy and delightful. So that is my only current whip since I finished the wreath like five minutes before recording this. <sighs> Lastly, I did get some yarn mail. I did get some, did acquire some yarn. And it's this little mini set. So I think I told y'all before, I have never gotten a yarn subscription service, uh, mostly because I buy plenty of yarn <laughs> as I explore and I don't use it fast enough for my stash not to get out of control. But when I heard about this yarn dyer doing a mini club and it was only 15 bucks a month that came with a full 20 gram mini and then a 10 gram mini for 15 bucks and I got to try a new dyer, seemed like a plan. And so it just came in. Um, this is from Amanda Knits. She is a new to me dyer. I'll hold it up so you can kind of see. Might get blown out. The, uh, the label, yeah, it's getting pretty blown out. But Amanda Knits, I found her on Instagram. I actually think I found her through Nitty Natty. Um, she was um, saying that she still had some advents left. And so the first one that I got is called Burning Sunset. And it is her Cantus Fingering Base, which is an 80-20. So 80% Superwash Merino Wool, 20% Nylon. I'm going to take it out of the little package so you can really see the colors because that's really, really pretty. Here, if I get my face out of it, maybe it'll, there, oh, you know you want to do it. Anyway, um, some pinks and some oranges mixed in there. Um, the name of this is called Burning Sunset. To me, it looks like a cocktail and makes me long for the days when I can have those again. Um, but I love it. I think it's great. 20 gram for the full mini. Oh. And then you also get a 10 gram, I think she called it a micro mini. And this one is just pink. And it's a beautiful pink. Um, might be able to see the, yeah, you can see the label a little bit better on this one. If it'll focus. There we go, Amanda Nets. This um, color is called Antique Ruby. And then this sunset very cute together. Um, I don't know what these will become yet. Part of me wants to do some sort of a like headband or um, kind of like a, a big thing that I could tie over a ponytail, a big yarn tie. I don't know, but they're very cute and very sweet. But because I don't have a plan for them, Right now, I probably won't play with them for a little bit just because too many other projects. There also were two stitch markers. Now, as a crocheter, it was a long time before I learned that I could use stitch markers because a lot of stitch markers are on jump rings that you use for knitting because they stay on your needles, but you can't do that in crochet because then you would never be able to get it out. However, both of these are on little clasps. These are called lever back clasps. So you could use them as a progress keeper or you could use them um, if you're a crocheter. Progress keeper if you're knitting, if you just wanted to like flop it somewhere and say, oh, I need to knit 10 rounds before or 10 inches before I do the next thing. Um, but they also work really well for a crochet. And because they have a big like open area, you could also use it if you knit um, as a jump ring, but they're very cute and they're very lightweight. And that was a sweet little goodie to have in there. So that's my only new yarn. I did 
order yarn from Spun, my favorite local yarn store it's in Michigan that I miss so very much. Um, for the sweaters I want to do for me, my husband Vaughn, and our little girl. It's one of the big projects that I have not started. Honestly, the big projects that I have left this year that are just like projects, not pattern writing, which I have a couple of those that I have deadlines on, but just projects are the Happy Place Yarn Cardigan, the Hattie Tee with the Granny Squares, which I'm hoping to start. Honestly, I could start that tomorrow because um, I have all the yarn for that. The sweaters for the three of us and then baby girls off of a blanket. Those are like the big things that need to get done before she gets here. Um, so that's why I, I can't do any more pattern tests. <laughs> and that's why um, some of the other things that I thought for sure I would have started by now have not been started. And with that, friends, I think that's all I've got for you this week. I hope that you have had a lovely week. Um, I am going to wrap it up with what I can't let go. And what I can't let go is this great little dog park that I got to take Scoot to yesterday. Um, coming from Michigan to New York, a lot of things are different. And one of them is that Michigan, there is parks everywhere. And in Ann Arbor, it was so easy to find a park. And there are a lot of parks here, but there are also just a lot more rules about like which parks dogs are allowed to be in, licenses you have to have for your dog, which we do have a license for him that says he's updated on all those shots. Some of the parks require passes, which I learned this week. And some of the parks don't have any parking. <laughs> so I could drive there, but I couldn't actually go with Scoot there because there's no place to put the car. All that to say, our neighbor was telling us about this great dog park and we went to it yesterday and it was awesome. And we spent 45 minutes outside and Scoot got to be off leash, which honestly, he doesn't get to do with us much here because we don't have a fenced in yard and it was great. So I think that'll become something that we do at least once a week, if not more than that especially on days when Vaughn is in the office and not working from home because it's just a relaxing place to be and huge and gorgeous. So that was a major, a major win for this week. And Scoot was so tired last night. <laughs> Slept like a little log after we got back. So that's why I can't let go of not something that has made me happy this week. I hope you have something that is making you happy this week and that your weekend ahead of you is full of relaxing making. And I will see you back here next week. Bye guys.